Hi, Rebecca. It's Margie from Basmati. How are you? Hi, Margie. I'm well. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Today, we're talking with Rebecca Lee from HighVibrationCity.com. She's going to share with us a little bit about her personal journey and her work. So, Rebecca, let's, let's get started. How did you get to where you are right now? That's a big story, I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm like, hmm, okay, where should I start? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, um, I think I, like I've mentioned to you, I was working in a local government um, for many years and there was, um, you know, certain situations that ended up pushing me out of there and, and getting me on my path, um, you know, to becoming a coach and, and to becoming a healer. So, um, and, you know, I had always been drawn um, to spiritual healing, you know, even when I was working in local government, I was always drawn to healers and psychics and tarot readers and mm -hmm. things like that. You know? um, so, um, but I, for a long time, just hadn't acknowledged that part of myself, you know, so um, yeah, it, it has been a bit of a journey, but um, really the, the start of it was when I let go of working in, you know, mainstream mainstream work and just began to to really um start the path in in my coaching business so i started you know training in in life coaching and um did that for about two years and that was a real uh that was a real opener for me i learned so much about myself and that was really when i started to embrace and acknowledge that intuitive part of myself and started to merge that into my coaching practice and mm -hmm. yeah it's really kind of gone from there but you know there's can been I, certain I, things yeah can I ask you so I just for anyone listening you had a really yeah. safe quote unquote safe job in yeah. where you went to work I'm going to say nine to five and yes that's totally true. taken care of right what you would seemingly on the outside yeah. and and left it for something very new. What, how did you feel inside in doing that? And what was that knowing like for you? For, some, I want, uh, for someone who's listening who, who may be in that position right now, you found that strength and courage to do that. Can you share a little bit yeah. about that? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I just always believe um, that the universe is always trying to point us in the right way. <laughs> and mm -hmm. so when, it, when I did leave my job, circumstances come up where I just wasn't going to stay there. But the truth is I always knew that I didn't belong there and that it wasn't for me. And I was always just, you know, trying to push it because it was safe, like you said. But when um, certain circumstances come up, and I just knew it was time to go. I, I just felt inside it was the right thing. There was, a, there was a lot of fear and I wasn't really sure what I was going to do, but it's when I just really had to, I really just had to say to myself, like, this is a time to just do exactly what you want to do. Like, what else are you going to do? Like, so it was just... Yeah, I just, it was just an mm -hmm. inner knowing. I just, it was just, you know, when people say, just trust that inner voice, that's exactly what I did. And it was just, I felt like I had nothing to lose and, and just yes. to follow my dream, you know, and that this was the time. I, I really feel the universe had tried to do it a couple of years before uh, and I had a chance yeah. to kind of get out, but I didn't follow that. I was just too afraid and, you know, uh, kept working in government for a few more years and then something else come up again it's like you know what this time I have to go it's time to go and um and I could just feel it really strong inside of me that even though I wasn't sure what I was you know what exactly was going to unfold um and exactly what I was going to do I just I just made a decision that I was just going to trust yeah. my intuition and 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 that's really what I've been doing ever since, to be honest. That's you know, wonderful. and that's been about yeah. ten years now. So yeah. 
it's trusting your intuition, following your heart and letting that universe push you along, huh? <laughs> Pretty much, you know, and just working with the fears, you know, because the fears always come up and it's just, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like that's something that I've you learn to to manage, you know, uh, more and more uh, as we go along the path, you know, because the more the more you follow the intuition and trust, you, the more that you do see that things work out. Not often, not always, <laughs> how you yeah. think they're going to, but things are always. Um, I I believe things are always guiding us in the right direction, and you know, if we can manage that fear and and just trust and take that step forward that will always be okay so the more i've seen that the more and more i i can trust that you know that i can yes that i'll be okay and everything's okay <laughs> and everything well. is okay right yeah so yeah, i want exactly. to ask you about high vibration city tell me more about that yeah well i guess that's it's interesting because when i finally left my government job and I was really opening up, um, you know, spiritually and really starting to embrace that part of myself. There was like no one around me, like family or friends that were really that way inclined or thought that way. And I thought, wouldn't it be amazing to have, you know, this space. And this was really for me, this was just really at the start of Facebook, you know, I really yeah. sort of didn't know much about it, but I just thought, wouldn't it be great to have an online space um, where people who were really open like this spiritually um, could connect, you know, and we could do our work together and we could connect together. And yeah, I, that's when I was given this high vibration city um, which I thought it would be something that I might create, you know, many, 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 many years down yeah. the track. It wasn't something that I thought that I would get to work on uh, straight away. But um, that's what happened because I was seeing a lot of people that wanted to talk online because we're all starting to talk online, but nobody wanted to say anything on Facebook. And I still see that to this day, although people are a bit more open now, but there's still people that, you know, didn't want to share what their beliefs were, what they felt about spirituality or energy or spirits or anything like that, because they didn't want anyone in their family to see what they were talking about. So there was a lot of fear there. And it just, I just kept seeing this online space, this high vibration city where people could connect, you know, and, and, and freely just share themselves and share that, that part of themselves that they felt that they couldn't in other areas of their life. So, so high vibration city, it was kind of born and I've been working on creating that ever since, to be honest. So yeah, That's it's a, a place for, yeah. Yeah. It's wonderful. A place for people to connect and, and learn and um, yeah, or it, it's still a work in progress to be honest with you, yeah. but we're getting there. It's, it's fantastic and, and wonderful that people can be authentic and real in a safe space and, and share about their spiritual and personal development, right? Um, yeah. And that feels very supportive. It feels very supportive. Um, I want to ask you about a couple of the courses you have. So the um, Unlock Your Love Box. Yes. Do tell. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, a, a big part of the journey, you know, that in writing these courses and building the city, of course, has been um, having to go, having to do my own work, you know, and unlock your love blocks. It, it It's kind of like, it really just come to me like it was seeing these, I could see these different um, blocks as such that were in then I could start seeing them and feeling them in different people's chakras like the more I was doing life coaching and tuning in and I started to see certain patterns of certain things being blocked you know things that people weren't really aware that they were still holding on to so unlock your love blocks is really like um, it's kind of like an energy and spiritual clean out <laughs> where you just get to on the, on the course, we, we work through um, 12 different chakras and it's really just an exploration into to each chakra and, 
and looking at the typical blocks that get stuck in each, in each chakra. So uh, I, I've currently got a, a group of women going through the course at the moment and we're, we're just finishing with the heart chakra and really just looking at um, all the different uh, things that we haven't grieved in life or the things that we've lost that we might not acknowledge. And it's not always people that have passed over like that. It's, it's, um, you know, there's a lot of financial losses or, mm -hmm. you know, things that people have lost or relationships or, you know, animals, you know, there's all sorts of things that we go through in life and don't always acknowledge them as a loss. And then, don't actually go through the grieving process with yeah. them. So when we're in the heart chakra, we're really looking at, you know, acknowledging these sorts of things. And, um, and people are just always amazed, like, wow, I didn't realize that I was holding on to grief about when I had to move out from that house, like that yeah. really affected me and, you know, things like this. So it's really an, you know, an exploration into what is, deep inside us that we don't always make time to sit and be with. And particularly when people are busy and, you know, I think in the last few years or some people all their lives, you know, just stuff happens all the time and it's just kind of like boom, 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 boom. And we just keep soldering on and not acknowledging, um, acknowledging what we're feeling or giving us ourselves the time and space to, to process something. So yeah. Um, and there are so many things that we like, like when they moved out of the house, right? That we wouldn't even think of until yeah. you're in that space when we do explore. Absolutely. And, and it's so powerful and healing. And maybe you could share a little bit about when, when, when those blocks are released, how that works in creating, I, I want to use the word abundance, but mm -hmm. more in your life. And, and so when we release those blocks that we have room for more, right? Absolutely. There's an expansion that happens um, that allows so many other beautiful gifts to come in. That is just absolutely spot on. And, you know, this is like a huge part of the program is we as these blocks are released and there's, and there's all sorts of feelings when, when that happens, you know, that pe everybody's different and experience different things, but there is this space, there is this expansiveness and, and what's happening is people are discovering like their spiritual gifts, really that's, and their purpose, you know, mm -hmm. and having this, like seeing life and seeing themselves from a completely different perspective, you know, and it's like, wow, I've just, you know, so many of them are like, wow, I've, I've just not acknowledged myself um, in this way before, you know, or really seeing um, my worth and, and what I do have to offer, you know, to the world, to, you know, as a career or, you know, in a relationship, you know, <laughs> like, um, so, you know, I've had women who have um, left relationships that they no longer feel aligned with. I've had women who have looked at their current relationship from a completely different perspective and, you know, taken on the part of, the challenges that is their responsibility rather than just seeing it all as the partner, <laughs> you know? So um, I've had women who have, you know, left jobs that they were just really hiding in, to be honest, and step into, you know, study or step into starting their own businesses, um, you know, just people, all sorts of things, all sorts yeah. of things, to be honest. Um, that's fantastic. What beautiful, amazing work you do. And, and it really is an honor to share space with you. Uh, yeah. Oh, thank uh, you. I'm, I, so, he, and, and I know the importance of this, but let's share healing with the ancestors yes. a bit. Yes. Yes. So this would be, this is, I mean, the Unlock Your Love Blocks work, I feel like it's really important um, 
to start with, you know, but the ancestry work just works in so beautifully with it. And this is just so close to my heart. Like I, I haven't studied so much any particular modality in healing on my journey, but uh, I have studied extensively in family constellations and it has just been one of the foundations of my work. Uh, basically where where we see um, it, it's soul work. It's soul work where we see how family dynamics really plays a huge part in what we're feeling and what we're experiencing in this lifetime. So the healing with the ancestors, uh, I've just, from my own journey, it's like the more, because I've had such a dysfunctional family on both sides and you know, as an intuitive and as an empath, even though I did, I didn't know um, my ancestors and some of my grandparents, I've still been able to feel their pain. And it has, it was something that I, I wasn't really able to explain for such a long time um, until I, I started doing this work and realized, wow, I can really feel the pain of my ancestors in my body, in my heart, in my soul. And I realized how important it is for us to connect back in with our ancestors, to acknowledge our ancestors, to understand their journey and to understand how that plays a part in our life. I believe that what what they had to you know deal with and what they were challenged with what what was not being able what wasn't able to be resolved from their part now sits with us and it's like we continue that work and when we when we go into the healing with the ancestors session or the course we really do a really deep exploration into what what were the patterns what were the feelings um, and how do they negatively impact our life? You know, how, how was it negatively impacting their life and how does that sort of mirror in our life? You know, it's a different age and that we have different, um, you know, it's a, it's a different, we have different challenges with technology and all of these sorts of things, but we see similar patterns in how we respond to things, how we, how we perceive ourselves how we perceive life how we perceive others um so that's one thing we we start we look at we look at all the disruptions to love so in family constellations um we look at what the disruption to the to the order of love is so in family constellations which by the way was um created by a man called bert hellinger and he lived in uh, with the with the Zulu tribes for so long, and he started to see how they were so connected with the ancestors, and how um, the you know the the challenges and the traumas with the ancestors really can play a part in our life. So, you know, we were always looking at where the disruptions in love was because we believe that love needs to flow down the generations. But so many people feel that. Um, they're taking care of their parents or oh, you know what I mean? Like it's sort yes. of like reversed, you know, there's so much of that because there's just been so, uh, the, you know, especially in the last couple of generations, but there's just been so much atrocity and there's so many people have been, families have been affected by war and, you know, <sighs> alcoholism and these kind of things stop the disruption of love in, in, and the flow of love in a family. So and what we need to do is connect back with the ancestors and we, we need to clear that part where, you know, we need to clear where that disruption has been and we need to work with them. So often in a healing, I will, you know, see certain ancestors come through and I'll, you know, I may get a lot of information or I may just get a sense of the feeling or, you know, what the trauma was and, you know, we'll see this huge healing take place, this, this acknowledgement of the pain, but then there's this acknowledgement of the higher part of themselves and the spirit that the client just needs to witness and understand and see this healing take place. Because I feel like so many of us are still entangled with or, 
or connected on an unconscious level into the the pain and the suffering of our ancestors so we need mm-hmm. to kind of witness this healing happening and so many people just feel um so much relief like when they when they're witnessing this healing they feel this relief because they've they've been like i've just felt this pain or i've felt this shame or i've you know had these feelings that i haven't really understood you know but now since this healing and and connecting back with my ancestor i can feel this relief and this freedom kind of fills them so it's very interesting sorry i'm probably no it's to- perfect <laughs> it's I, perfect I really work. yeah you know as you're speaking i'm thinking of even just um in my own family, how uh, I came, I come from a very, very, very big family and yeah. how the first four, my mom was the f- oldest of 12, by the way. And she was a, fem- a female and she had frozen shoulder stuff, right? As she got older. Also the first male did. It was very interesting. Um, and just physical manifestations of what can happen, right? Not only other things and how really with this work, personally for me, I was able to break some of those patterns, right? Um, mm-hmm. on, even on a physical level and how truly pow- powerful it is. And, and we don't think about that, right? And it's just the healing process and the, the love, how when we we can heal those lines backwards and forwards, right? Yes, right. Um, and it's incredibly powerful, incredibly powerful. Uh, I really believe that too. And yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I love how you bring up about the physical because, yeah. you know, so many people um, have, you know, been suffering from, you know, chronic pain and all sorts of, um they well they also think assume it's a genetic condition to be passed down and they don't trust or know or even know maybe that it's possible to heal those things and know we are not victims to what our parents had that's exactly and and that's really powerful to know not just on the on the spiritual spiritual level but the physical level and that once those spaces are love and light are brought to them right and, and even accept it and acknowledge and begin to heal that manifests in our physical body. That's, and, it, that's right. Yeah. It is incredibly powerful. Um, yes. Also just to um, know our place and know where we belong. You know, mm-hmm. I feel like the disconnection, you know, there's so many cultures that practice, you know, honoring their ancestors, you know, on a, on quite a daily basis or have certain ceremonies through the year. And I, f- I find in the Western culture, that's something I feel that we've lost at yes. some point and that we did have at some point. So even bringing, you know, I, I like to teach people how to set up an ancestor altar and really just having our, you know, honoring our ancestors and, it just gives this sense of knowing where we belong and that sense, that feeling that we have these beautiful ancestors behind us supporting us. So a lot of people just feel, you know, um, just that more sense of belonging and, you know, more supported that they can step forward in life because there's that connection back again, you know? So. um, That's a very beautiful way of saying it. mm. So any, anything you would like to say to our listeners before we close today? Oh, just, you know, thank you so much for listening. I could talk about this stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, just um, we're, we're still working on the city. So uh, hopefully by the end of the year, we'll have all the tech stuff done where people will be able to come in and join up in the city uh, for free. And it'll be a place where, you know, you can um, connect with others. And, you know, a lot of people have been asking me for, you know, when it'd be ready because they really are looking for an alternative space to connect with others online. So um, keep an eye out f- uh, for when that's that's all going to be set up and ready to go. And, and you let um, us know. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. I will do. I will. 
And I do uh, also want to tell our listeners that um, you have a free um, health with with the ancestors ebook, correct? Yes, I do. And that's on their site, so you, or on your site, so you can download that. Um, please be sure to check that out. Um, it's fantastic. It's three key, three keys to healing negative family karma. Yes. Oh, so, thank you. Mother. Yes. So that's um, just the site under healing with the ancestors, and that's there. Um, and there's also an unlock your love blocks um, ebook on there as well. If anyone's interested uh, um, in three keys to a, a great relationship. So that's oh, fantastic. <laughs> Rebecca, again, she's with high vibration city.com. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Thank you so much, Margie. Look uh -huh. forward to speaking with you again soon. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Rebecca.